In this presentation, we will enter transactions into a sales journal using this information over here related to sales. And we will have in this sales journal both a sale that has the accounts receivable and sales component to it, as well as the cost of goods sold and inventory component. In other words, dealing with sales of inventory items as opposed to dealing with sales where we don't have inventory. So if we were a service company and we had a sales journal, then we would just have this item here where we would have accounts receivable and sales or revenue and we would record the sales as we go if we are selling inventory then there are two components that we can put into our sales journal and that will include the accounts receivable and sales and the cost of those items so we're going to enter that data here into the sales journal once we have done that for the entire month we will enter that data into the journal the general journal being here that's going to be the uh, entire month's worth of information we will enter in one transaction for the sales transactions that being the purpose that saving time then posting that to the general ledger and seeing the result in the trial balance from that transaction recording all the information for the month related to sales remember that the sales journal is going to be used and we can think of it as being used if we are using a less automated system or a more manual system in terms of the sales journal and that's going to save times because we are going to be putting things in uh, in one line item as we go and that'll save us time we won't be uh, posting it as we go and it is useful to see the sales journal uh, even if we are using an automated system because it is often the case that we will have the reports that we want to see in terms of a sales journal type report we also want to see different forms of how a different accounting format or structure can be put together look at the pros and cons look at the differences and similarities so first we've got on 717 p company and we have uh, 720 sales cost 540 554 so we're going to just list this out and the sales journal is pretty straightforward every sale is is just going to be listed out here we're going to say p company that's who we sell to that's the customer and then the accounts receivable of course the sales amount is going to be higher than the cost we're selling them for more than we purchased them for in other words and note the sales journal only represents sales that are made on account if we got cash at the point of sale even though we made a sale and would still be crediting sales it's not going to go to the sales journal the sales journal only recording those sales on account those are sales we didn't get cash for those uh, journal entries where we're going to increase accounts receivable so it's going to be 720 in this side for accounts receivable and then 540 on the cost of goods sold side so this representing increase in accounts receivable increase in sales and which is revenue or income increase in cost of goods sold and a decrease in inventory here net income going down from this transaction and the um, inventory going down so we're going to report this as well we're not going to post it to the general ledger not until we do all the end until we get to the end of the month but for the sales journal we're going to post it to the subsidiary ledger as we go to show who owes us money so that we can go through the collection process at a later time so we're going to say p companies who we're looking for we're going to scroll over to the right scroll down we're looking for p company so here's p company here in our subsidiary ledger so we are in accounts receivable subsidiary ledger p company debit side in cell aj32 we're going to do this with a formula so we'll say equals and then i'm going to scroll to the left i'm going to scroll up and we are looking for that um the receivable here the 720 and enter so we could just type this in here if we want to but i i recommend formulas you could also type in equals e4 and that'll pull in the 720 we now have in our total subsidiary ledger that 720 adding up all these customers here that 720 is red because it does not now match what is on the accounts receivable gl and accounts receivable trial balance it won't until we reconcile at the end of the time period recording all the all the transactions for uh, the accounts receivable at the end of the month now we're going to go to seven 24 and once again p company and it's going to be the same uh, format here we're just going to say we sold it on this side account receivable and sales 425 we purchased it for 327 same information yeah, slightly different uh, sales amounts so we have different type of sale 
but we're going to post this to p subsidiary ledger again so again we're not posting it to the gl not posting it up here but we are going to post it to the subsidiary ledger as we go so now we're down in aj33 aj33 in p company debit side for the subsidiary ledger we're going to do this with a formula saying equals scroll to the left scroll it up and we see the 425 here in e5 and enter so once again you could type in 425 or you could type in equals uh, e5 and then enter and that should go from 720 up by 425 to 1145 which is currently our total once again it's red because we have not entered all the information into our uh, journal entry then we're going to have on 730 we're going to have s company and that's 425 once again so we're going to say the sales 425 and 327 is the cost note that if we're a smaller uh, company that's doing this and we have to make these sales a lot of the times these the sales price will be much the same we may be selling very similar items or uh, a variety of, of items that uh, will have similar sales prices here so we're going to say that this will be s company so we're going to do the same thing posting it not to the gl yet but to the subsidiary ledger so we're going to scroll down finding that subsidiary ledger for s company here it is here's the subsidiary ledger we're going to be in the debit side we are in cell a n 32 and 32 a n 32 we will say equals and then scroll to the left we're going to find that transaction scrolling up and there we have it that 425 in e6 so within e6 and enter and again if you could type it in there but i recommend formulas you can also type in the formula of e6 uh, equals e6 then we're currently at a total of 1570 that's still red because we haven't done our journal entry here yet we will do so at the end of the month last one we're going to say on 730 we have for m company a sale of 500 cost for that sale is 385 and there we have that information um now we're going to post that to the subsidiary ledger once again not the general ledger the subsidiary ledger for m company scrolling to the to the right scrolling down looking for m company so here's m company we're going to be on the debit side so we're here in a n 40 a n 40 we will say equals scroll left scroll up and there we have the 500 here and enter so now we have the 500 in m again we could type in e7 to enter that information our total now is 2070 once again it's red because that's not what's in our gl and that's not what's on our trial balance however we are now going to sum up this information and hopefully that'll add up to the same amount which we will then post to the gl and then create the uh, trial balance from it so we're going to put the total we're going to sum these up to 720 plus the 425 plus the 425 plus the 500 doing that with the sum function we're going to say equals sum double click the sum function highlight from the 720 down to the 500 and enter so there's our total there that's uh, 2070 and we're going to do the same thing on this side we could drag it over but i'm going to sum these up so we can see the sum function see us adding this up equals the sum and sum function adding the 555 554 down to the 385 and enter now this, these are all underlined over here i'm going to underline both of them so here we have the underline and then we'll double underline here uh, just for formatting purposes so there is our amount now we're going to do uh, the journal entry related to the entire sale month's worth of sales note of course once again that we don't have many transactions here but uh, if we were depending on the company we were working at we may have many transactions per day and the more transactions that are the same the more this type of system would work well uh, so that we could just record it all at one time and then post it over here so we're going to say this is at the, at the end of the month, uh, 7.30. And there's going to be two components now, of course, and it, it lists it on the sales journal. We're going to say accounts receivable debited and then sales credited. I'm going to do this with two separate journal entries as is normally done for demonstration type purposes. may not be the case for software 
to have two separate journal entries since they do happen at the same time. But we're going to break this out as is the tradition for our uh, demonstration. We're going to say that accounts receivable is going to go up. Accounts receivable is an asset account, has a debit balance, and therefore we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, another debit. So we'll copy accounts receivable in AJAG6, right-click and copy. We're going to put that in cell AB5, right-click and paste, one, two, three. The amount's going to go here in AC5, and we're going to do that by saying equals, and then point to that 2070, and enter. So we're just pulling that over. And then the credit's going to be the same amount, but a credit. I'm going to do that with a formula, nice simple formula. Instead of equals, hitting negative, and then selecting that 2070, taking that number, and flipping the sign. So there we have that. Now we just need the other account, which is sales, or revenue. And so if we scroll down, assets, liabilities, capital, or equity, and then the sales. So here's sales. That needs to go up. So it has a credit balance. We're going to make it go up in the credit direction by doing the same thing to it. Another credit. So we're going to right-click and copy. And then we'll scroll up and we'll put that underneath in AB6. Right-click and paste. One, two, three. So there we have it. Uh, our, our first journal is already indented for us. If it weren't, we can go to the Home tab, Alignment, and Increase Indenting. So now we're going to post this. I'm going to post this and then do the second component here. So we're going to post this to the general ledger. Posting first the accounts receivable. Here it is here in the journal entry. Here it is there on the trial balance. Second account on the trial balance. Then it will be the second account on the general ledger as well. Here's cash. Here's accounts receivable. We're on the debit side. We are here in AJ16. We're going to do this with a formula saying equals. And then pointing to that 2070. Bringing that zero balance up by 2070 to 2070. Here's that 2070 here on the trial balance being brought over. We are currently out of balance by that amount until we record the other side. Here's the sales item on the journal entry we need to report. Here it is on the trial balance. It's in order. Assets, liabilities, equity, then sales. We're looking for that first blue account on the uh, general ledger, in other words. So we're scrolling over. Here are the assets. Here are the liabilities. Here's the equity, and there is the sales that we are looking for. We want to be on the credit side, so here's sales, credit side. Here's the credit balance. We are in cell AB22, AB22. I'm going to say equals, and then scroll uh, to the left until we find the information we need. And there it is, that 2070, 2070 in AD6, and enter. And that's a bit of scrolling to get over there, I know. So you could type in a negative 2070, but I'd rather see the formula. I'd rather use the formula and work to find it. Or you could type in equals AD6 and enter. And that should pull over that cell reference as well. That 2070 now, of course, appearing here on the trial balance and appearing as net income. It's not net income yet, though, though, because we haven't recorded the second component of this, that being the related cost of goods sold and reduction of inventory. So I'm going to skip a line and do this in its own transaction. Now, I'd like to think of the inventory first. I think that's more intuitive for most people. It's tangible. So people say, hmm, inventory uh, will typically have a debit balance, and we're making it to go down. Therefore, we're going to do the opposite thing to it. Now note there's nothing in inventory right now, and that's because we're recording the sales journal before the purchases journal. So once we record the purchases journal, there will be something in here. So as of the end of the month, we're going to record all the, all the journals. So we're actually going to end up with a negative inventory at this point until we record the purchase journal. So I'm going to copy this. We're going to say copy. We're going to skip a line. We're going to put this on the bottom here. So in the new journal entry, and then on the bottom in AB9, right click and paste. One, two, three. I'm going to indent that, go into the Home tab, Alignment, Increase Indentation. Then we're going to go to the credit side in AD9. I'm going to pull this number over, but instead of doing that with an equal, we're going to say negative, and then point to that 1,593 and enter, and that'll pull it over. Then we're going to go on, on the top here, AC8. We're going to take that number, flip the sign, and uh, pull it up here. I'm going to do that with our little formula, that being negative instead of equals of that number taking that number and flipping the sign. So there we have that. Now we just need to know what this account will be. And we can see here it is cost of goods sold, the expense related to us consuming the inventory. Here it is on the uh, trial balance. We can see it's in the expense area. It's going to go up in the debit direction. So we're going to copy the cost of goods sold. We're going to put that here on top, AB8, right click and paste, one, two, three. So there we have that. Now we're going to post this. We got the cost of goods sold first. 
So that is all the way down here. It's the second dark blue account, second income statement account, assets, liability, equity, income, and expense being the order. We're looking for that second income statement account on the general ledger. So here we have the assets. We have the liabilities. We have the equity, revenue, and expenses. We're looking up here, cost of goods sold in A and B, D, 9. So we're in cost of goods sold, debit, B, D, 9. We'll say equals. We're going to scroll to the left. Just going to scroll all the way to the left till we find our amount in AC uh, 8 of the 1,593 and enter. So there it is, 1,593. If I scroll back over, here it is down, down here, 1,593. Now we're going to do the inventory. Here's the inventory we want to post. Here it is on the trial balance, third account. It's going to be the third account on the G general ledger, therefore. So the general ledger, here it is, third account down. We're looking for inventory to be a credit, and it's going to go in the credit direction, have a negative kind of inventory, which is not the case because we haven't recorded the sales journal yet. So be aware of that. We are in AK23. We'll say equals, scroll to the left, scroll back up, and we're looking for that 1,593, uh, uh, and enter. And there we have it. So we have this credit in inventory until we do the purchases journal. Here it is, uh, the credit in inventory here. And that's going to be our transaction. Note what happened here on the income statement side. Revenue went up by 2,070. That's a credit, not a negative in terms of this worksheet. And then cost of goods sold went up. The net of those two then being a net increase of 477. So that's going to be the uh, sales journal. Note, note how specific the sales journal is. Uh, and just note that if we do make a sale uh, for cash, that it wouldn't go here. This is really specific journal, one of the most specific type of journals we have. Only a sale on account will go here, and it's very uh, definite, basically, where we are going to put this information. We don't have, like we have in some of the other special journals, in other words, uh, an other account, uh, typically, in a sales journal.